Good morning, everyone. Welcome to your presentation. This is a joint work of the Hong Kong University of Science and Technology with Xiamen University. Today, we will present our work, Beacon, which is a great directed grid box fuzzing with a provable pass proving. So let's start. Nowadays, fuzzing has a huge impact on both industry and academia. In industry, fuzzing has proved to be one of the most effective ways to detect vulnerabilities. For example, both Google and Microsoft has their own cluster platforms for fuzzing, and they claim that over 30,000 vulnerabilities have been detected since 2016. Moreover, in academia, there are over 200 fuzzing papers published in the top TA conference and journal since 2015. However, Vulnerabilities keeps growing every year, which increase the difficulties to detecting them. To detect and fix these bugs more efficiently, directed fuzzing are proposed and aims to detect specific bugs automatically. It has various applicable scenarios such as patch verification, one-day POC generation, and debugging. Similar to conventional fuzzing, the success of directed fuzzing comes from its simple workflow, which make it convenient to deploy on various scenarios. Basically, the leverage lightweight intergeneration method to efficiently produce lots of test cases to examine target programs. It will report the bug triggered to the developers directly. Meanwhile, if the test case trigger new program behaviors, for example, new coverages, and this input will be preserved as a seed template for further input generation. The, this feedback mechanism makes fuzzing gradually explore the target program thoroughly and detect specific vulnerabilities. Specifically, fuzzing can generate enormous number of inputs to explore the program within a short time. For example, we conduct a 24 hours experiment using the state-of-art directed father AFL Go. And we found out that on average, there are over 30 million inputs can be generated to, to examine the target programs. But is all problem solved? Unfortunately, the answer is no. We found out that not all generated input can contribute to detecting vulnerabilities. In a previous experiment, we found out that more than 95% of the generated input cannot even reach the vulnerabilities we want to detect. Therefore, crash reproduction using directed fuzzing is similar to finding a needle in a haystack. The reason for such difficulties is because of the invisible pulse explosion. Specifically, there are still enormous number of pulse that are even unreachable towards the target vulnerabilities. Unfortunately, existing work do not reject executing those invisible input at all. The main idea in the existing literature is to make a father reach the target faster is to prioritize the path closer to the target. Their intuition is that the closeness measured by different distance matrix represents the possibilities to reach the target. For example, since pass 1 is closer to the target than pass 2, father will prioritize pass 1 over pass 2. However, since the majority of the input generation is still random, there is still an enormous number of invisible inputs generated. However, if we attempt to filter those invisible inputs, then fuzzing needs to solve the pass condition, which then suffer from the neutral pass explosion and expensive constraint solving problem again. To solve this problem, our intuition is that not all execution are worth executing completely. That is, whenever an execution hits invisible instructions, the following execution cannot trigger the bugs. For example, Whenever the execution reaches blocks D, F, G, or H, it represents the following execution can never cover the target block E. Therefore, father should terminate these executions immediately. 
This intuition motivates our work, which is a directed fuzzing with a probable past proming. As a high level view, we prone not only those unreachable paths, for example, the fourth branch at line 12, but also the paths with unsatisfied path condition using a precondition inferred through a backward static analysis. For example, we can infer a precondition based on the path condition from block B to E. Therefore, if the following inputs cannot satisfy this precondition when reaching block B, then we will terminate this execution immediately since it cannot reach the target. More specifically, we can use the path condition at line eight as a precondition and place it at line three. Therefore, a new input such as z equal to 40 can be rejected so that father does not need to execute the programs from line four to eight to improve efficiency. Overall, both unreachable and unsatisfied paths are prone. Okay, let's go into a bit more details of how we achieve these outcomes by inferring those preconditions. In terms of fuzzing, the precondition need to be an over approximation. Over approximation ensure all prone paths do not trigger the box. For example, we can infer an under approximation such as Z should smaller than 20 as a precondition. However, this would filter the input that can trigger the crashes, which thus hinder the performance of fuzzing. Therefore, how to infer the precondition precisely becomes the main challenge. Precision allows the precondition from proving more infinite paths. For example, we can simply extract the, the explicit branch conditions as the precondition. However, since we do not consider the path condition completely, such as the one at line six, some invisible execution cannot be filtered. However, precisely reasoning the precondition is expensive, which make it becomes a trade-off problem between the efficiency and the precision. Our solution to this problem is the interval obstruction with precision enhancement. Interval obstruction is the cheapest over approximation of the program states. Here, we list three kinds of widely used obstructions in existing literature. Different from polyhedra and autogon obstructions, which is MP hard complexity for inference, interval obstructions can be obtained with linear complexity, which makes the method more scalable. Therefore, we only need to improve the precision of the interval obstructions to make it more effective in proming infeasible paths. Especially, we improve the precision through two aspects, data flow and control flow. The first one is relation preservation for the data flow. One of the main reasons that interval obstruction is not precise is because it does not consider the relation among variables. Therefore, we preserve the relations during the backward interval analysis to enhance the precision. For example, the existing interval analysis cannot obtain the precondition for variable y at line six. Therefore, the precondition for variable z is also missing in the final results. However, if we preserve the relation among variable at line six, then we can use it to update the relation, um, the precondition for variable y at line five, which further benefits the precondition at line four. Eventually, we can have a precondition with better precision. The second enhancement is for mitigating the precision loss when pass explodes. Existing work introduced precision loss when merging the results from different branches coarsely to ensure the over approximation. For example, even though existing work can infer the precondition for branches at line five and seven precisely, 
the precision loss occur when reaching line four, where two branches meet. To ensure the over approximation, the precondition for variable Z is unbounded and thus cannot filter any infeasible paths. Therefore, we keep the precondition for different branches in a disjunction form. Therefore, we can have a precision precondition for better precision. Overall, disjunctions intense the precision for various control flow paths. Still, the number of feasible paths could explode. Therefore, when the number exceeds the predefined bound, we selectively merge the disjunctions with the least precision loss. We observe that merging different disjunctions can introduce different precision loss. For example, the case above could introduce a precision loss from 30 to 50, but no precision loss in the case below. Therefore, we will merge the case below. In general, we measure the precision loss by the distance between the two disjunctions. We implement our method as a directed fuzzer beacon, which is built upon LVM. We mainly use three metrics, the bug reproducing abilities, the effectiveness of pass pruning, and the performance of our precondition to evaluate our method. For bug reproducing abilities, we achieve 11.5 times speed up than the state of art and find 22 incomplete fix with 10 CVE assigned. For effectiveness, we prune over 80% of the paths during the evaluation. In terms of the performance, precondition inference can terminate within five hours while introducing less than 6% runtime overhead for filtration. We follow the similar settings in existing work and compare with five state of our fathers. We also chose 51 CVEs from 12 real world programs frequently evaluated by existing works. We first evaluate the improvement of reproducing speed. We use 120 hours as a time budget for each CVE chosen. The X axis is the index of the chosen CVEs. Beacon can reproduce all CVE chosen within a given time budget, while existing work cannot handle most of them. To understand why Beacon can achieve such performance improvement, we first evaluate the ratio of the rejected paths. And we find out that more than 80% of the execution paths during the fuzzing process can be terminated by our precondition inference. Moreover, we found out that using the precondition, we can prone nearly 30% more paths with almost 3.5 times speed up than purely used reachability analysis. Meanwhile, we integrate Beacon with other three state-of-art fathers, AFL, MOPT, and AFL++. On average, compared with the original tools, the integration can improve other fathers to reproduce a specific box 9.69 times faster. Moreover, to evaluate the runtime overhead caused by the precondition filtration, we run the same input against the two versions of the benchmark program. And fortunately, we found out that Beacon introduced less than 6% runtime overhead on average. To sum up, Beacon prompts not only those unreachable paths, but also the paths cannot satisfy the precondition inferred by our static analysis, so that we can terminate those unnecessary execution earlier to improve efficiency. For more details, please come to your QA sessions and feel free to try our tools on Docker Hub. Thank you. Thank you, He Ching, for the talk. And He Ching is available on Zoom right now, taking questions. So um, audience is here. If you have any questions, please feel free to come to the front. And I would like to start first. Um, so He Ching, first double check. Can you hear me now? Uh, yes. Great. OK, so my question is about you know, the precondition that you insert in the program. 
So I just wonder, how did you decide where to insert those preconditions? Uh, we usually, uh, we make actually, we split into two scenarios. The first scenario is un purely unreachable uh, blocks. Then we will insert this precondition at the beginning of each blocks. For those uh, uh, infeasible paths that are inferred by the uh, precondition analysis, then we will find that we will first transform the program into the SSA form. And then we will find the, the uh, def uh, def definition site of the related variables. And we will insert the uh, precondition check at the uh, uh, directly after the definition set of, the, uh, of the variables. Yep, that makes sense. Actually, in that way, so you can basically you're trying to insert the precondition as early as possible. That's great. Thank you. Okay, we have yes. questions. Yep. Uh, we have questions from the audience right now. Um, hi, I'm Kyle okay. from uh, ASU. Um, it's very interesting work. Uh, I have a question about like how do you decide um, like which is the target block that you want to reach like at function level like you have function A that calls function B which may reach the uh, a target basic block how do you know that like this function B is the target when you are uh, analyzing function A? Uh, actually, uh, this is a good question. So first of all, the target point, uh, currently we, uh, since we are, we claim ourselves as a directed button. So, uh, usually we need, uh, the, uh, the user to provide the bug report, which, uh, it, com it at least contain, uh, the cross point of this bug you want to reproduce. So currently we, uh, we, this is a basic, uh, uh, assumption of uh, of a work, in, or input of a work. Then, uh, with this uh, given uh, targets, we will locate it in the pro, uh, in the programs, and then we will use a backward static analysis uh, to in, uh, to analyze the precondition from the crash point to the program entry, to and then we, uh, so to infer the preconditions. So uh, uh, current uh, so. To answer your questions, so currently uh, for the target points, we will we only need one target points provided by the users, and then uh, other uh, and other related or reachable program points can be inferred automatically by our engines, and of course uh, multiple uh, uh, multiple entry are welcome. For example, if you can give a, give a, a specific trace. Of the of the target vulnerability you want to reproduce, that may that may uh, improve the efficiency or the effectiveness of the reproductions, but that require extra manual expertise. So we do not recommend that, but we as uh, we can uh, support this kind of scenarios too. So, I hope this answer your questions. Um. So if I understand correctly, you need a some manual effort initially, and then like. So you know where where the target base block is, right? Uh, yes. Okay. Thank you. No problem. Hi. One more question. Uh, my question okay. is: If I understand your work, you're trying to reduce the number of uh, computations by doing this provable path pruning. Um, so I was wondering, there's two forms you can sort of stop an execution. One is through your precondition analysis. The other form is through a static reachability if, if the execution path will not reach the target. Do you know what the breakdown was in terms of your results? Uh, yes, actually in our presentation, we have reported this statistic. So using purely uh, unreachable uh, reachability analysis to prompt those unreachable paths, we can prompt like around half of the uh, uh, execution during the fuzzing process. But still there are like, we can, we can prompt actual like 30, uh, 30 to 40% of the execution using the preconditions. So I think, uh, so I, I should say that the com uh, combination of these two uh, method are, are uh, 
uh, necessary or for improving the directive uh, effectiveness of the directive body. Thank you. And, uh, and uh, yes, okay, thank you. Oh, please go ahead. Uh, no, for, uh, just want to make sure that because uh, uh, in our opinion, uh, actually which both uh, reach, um, reachability analysis and precondition analysis are integrated in beacons. And because uh, because of the time limit, we do not uh, make uh, talk too much details about the reachability analysis in our engines. And you can find out through our papers. Uh, that is what I, what I want to say, uh, not big deals. Thanks. All right, for the interest of time, last question, please. Uh, okay, hi, hi, great work. And I'm, I'm Joe from Purdue Universities. And actually, I have a question about how do you handle the loops and the recursions? Because, like, I guess your abstract domain is the interval, which is a lattice, of course. But you also introduce the disjunctions into the into your abstract abstract domain. So I was wondering how much overhead you will introduce when you're considering the disjunctions, because I thought when we're considering the disjunctions, it will be hard to reach the fixed point. Yeah, that's my questions. That is a very good question. Uh, so actually, we also noticed these issues, and we actually evaluated in our papers. So that, and th this to your answer. So first of all, uh, that is uh, the solution of, to, your answer, to your questions is uh, is our second implementation, which is called the bounded disjunctions. So actually, to uh, limit it or to uh, uh, avoid a state explosion uh, bring by loop, so we will bound the disjunction. We will preserve during the backward analysis. And so, uh, and if, for example, if a loop that may uh, um, generate an enormous amount of state during the backward analysis, then we will uh, automatically merge some. Uh, some of the, uh, the, the states to, uh, together. So you, in your, uh, in, you know, using, program, uh, using a program perspective, you can regard it as we will merge some paths uh, in the loop together. So since, since, we, uh, since we use a precondition to prone those uh, passes, uh, such a merging process will always become an over approximation of the preconditions. And therefore, we can still safely prone those infeasible paths. But, uh, but of course, the precision will influence the effectiveness of proning. And fortunately, we found out that during our evaluation, we found out that uh, pro a, proper, like, a proper bound like phi we use in our evaluation can, uh, effect can like, find the sweet spot between the effectiveness and the efficiency to handle the loop. Uh, in our evaluations, and of course, this I think this is still an open question for uh, for implementations, uh, and uh, we're we're still working on this part in the future work. Great. Okay. Okay. Thanks for your answer. Okay, and thanks, Ho Ching and all speakers, and thank you everyone for coming.